Hello, everyone. Welcome back to First Listen Media. And today I'm with the band Broom. What's up, guys? Hey. Hey, what's up? What's up? So let's get started. Where are you guys from? We're from Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania. The really? Close to Dakota. Yeah, he's he's up near Pittsburgh. We're about an hour outside of Pittsburgh. Okay. That depends on the park, but yeah. Yeah. So where did Broom start? Uh, the name or just us as general? Just everything. All right. We have to go back a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not really all, two years. We're all Bell Vernon. Well, I shouldn't say we're all alumni. Scar's still a senior yeah, he's, high school. He's still alumni, alumni or alumni to be. Yeah. Um, we all went to the music program uh, at, at Bell Vernon. So we all kind of knew each other either directly or tangentially through that. Like, I didn't know Carter before we, we did this, but I, we all, I knew Race. Yeah. I'm kind of like the meeting point for everybody yeah he is he's like the yeah. uh what do they call it marble the um the nexus yeah i'm like the nexus yeah. for everybody the liaison. um we oh yeah we should say our names too i forgot i don't want to just say names this is the race hi i'm ben this is carter that's caleb and that's Bodie. Um, nice to meet you guys so we um you know we all kind of knew each other through bell vernon uh through the music program and then one day he texted me and said actually you can tell the story of how yeah, we, you, yeah, you, you yeah. recruited all of us because that's what so happened. one day uh, I think me and Buddy were a marching band, and he was playing the guitar. And I was like, "Wow, he's really good. Let's start a band." So then I asked Buddy <laughs> to start a band with me. And then uh, we needed like another guitarist, and we needed a bass player. We needed just like the whole thing. <laughs> so then I was like, "Hmm, I think I remember guitars from high school." So then I texted Ben, and then we went through a couple of different drummers, and then I figured out Carter was the best. So we had Carter, and then last was Caleb to join. Uh, I think. Ben, I recommended yeah, I recommended his name, but yeah. I I think it was it through me. I thought yeah, I thought yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, we, we am drive. Yeah, we graduate. We graduate together. Buddy by himself, race by himself, and Carter's yet yet to graduate. Um, mm. but yeah, we uh, so he's he's still a. Uh, are you are you eighteen? You're seventeen. Seventeen. He's seventeen. So we have a we have a youngin in the band. Um, the rest of us are, <laughs> the rest of us are uh, all of age. Um, that was that was a weird way to say that. But, uh, <laughs> Very. <laughs> um anyway yeah so we all we all kind of knew each other through or either tangentially or directly and then we started practicing and it, there was a while before we actually got like all of us together in the same place like yeah it took a while i think originally it was you two originally and then i showed up a few times and then after that i wasn't there a few weeks and he came so then there was a few weeks where he was just there uh with, with these two and then for like i think once or twice was i there with caleb before you or you were you came before Caleb. okay yeah because i was playing the bass for a little bit yeah that's yeah. right yeah. yeah um so then we after a while after probably a month or two we got a we got a full uh full band going and then about what like six months later we started playing out yeah yeah about that um and well, we, we played out for the first time and then we waited another year yeah we played yeah. We, we, we played <laughs> a grad party yeah, yeah we played at his graduation party and that was our first show, and then there was a year of no gigging, and yeah. then uh, then we started really picking up. We yeah. had like almost thirty some shows this summer. Yeah, like it's it's a lot of. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we were ready before we played out because that's one of the things that was important, at least to me. I figured it was everybody else. I don't think we ever talked about that, but that was big. I didn't want to show up and sound like crap. Yeah. Uh, so we we made sure that we were good. So whenever we showed up, we were uh, we were sounding decent. Um, but yeah, ever since then, it's just been show practice, show practice. Recording, practice, battle of bands, practice. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty much how it's gone. Um, so we've 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 kind of been moving at a pretty good pace now, I'd say. Uh, for as for only being our first show is April of last year, right? Yeah, something like April of twenty two. So the for the nineteenth hole, that was the first show other than his grad party. Um, so that was that was about the. Um, it's coming up on a year now, I guess, in two months. Uh, when we started playing out, I think we made pretty good progress for only seriously doing this for a year. So we're we're happy with it. Honestly, with what I've heard, definitely a lot of progress, and I love it. Yeah, thank you. I have been blasting back on the road all day during my lunch break today. Like, how oh, does that work? I was just played like the whole break. Yeah, had that on repeat. And I fucking love it. Good awesome. job on that one. EP coming out next month, so if we have more like that coming. So and we have uh, Rhythm House Studios to thank for that. Yeah, so. they, we were offered. Uh, um, so for yeah, let's let's explain that. So for the EP, um. Did they offer that before or after Battle of Bands? Before, before, before. So they offered us to record an EP. We played there twice. It's a little place in Charleroi called Rhythm House Studios. 
and it's a uh, uh, they have like a stage where they can see probably what fifty people there. Yeah, no. about so it's not a huge stage, but it's a cool place that he has every week. They have live music there. Um, and an open just, mic. Yeah, an open mic. So it's kind of a cool way to just meet other musicians and play and jam out. We were there a lot uh, two nights ago, but we just jammed with people we never even knew before. Um, so it was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, we uh, they offered us after we played there the second time. Bob Arthur is the um, he's actually the executive producer on on our uh, EP. He offered us to record an EP for free at their studio um, and mix master and all that, all that fun stuff. So we thank we, that was awesome from them. So we recorded that. And then after we start, did we start recording before Battle of Bands? I think we did. Yeah. We started recording and then we entered, entered this, we had the second round of a Battle of Bands competition where that's how we met Dakota. Uh, and then we ended up winning that. There was two rounds. Um, and then through that, we actually, we won a lot of stuff. Um, but Included is a full album, recorded, mixed, mastered, um, and a year of management from Dakota, our mutual contact. And uh, we, uh, I don't know, that's I'm we're excited to do that. We have what about half the album written at this point, yeah, yeah, pretty so cool. we're gonna, um, we're gonna try that hopefully this summer. Um, so we, we've been pretty fortunate in who we know and what, what's who's what people have given us, um, to be able to be where we are now. So we thank all them, yeah, I can definitely see that. And Dakota is an amazing guy. Like, mm-hmm. I love being a part of his whole project. Honestly, I'm lucky he even found me. Mm-hmm. So I'm grateful to him as well. Like, he always yeah. finds, like, such good people when you least expect it. Yeah. From what we've... We, we, we only met him in person the one time at, at Battle of Bands. He came up to us after we won. And in that, in that like, 15-minute period, it was kind of, like, hectic because we were just like, holy crap, we just won 10 grand worth of, worth of crap. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> we... Uh, so we kind of... We met him quickly, and then he messaged us on Facebook, and we're getting now we're starting to work with him more and more. And I, he didn't even know we were doing the EP until what December? Yeah, yeah. We didn't tell him about that because we didn't even think to. And then so now he's putting his support, but the label support behind the EP, which is awesome. Um, and we're we're excited to work with him now and for the album. He's a great guy, honestly. He will go like the full ten miles if he thinks it's worth it, and I've seen that so many times. He's awesome. a down to earth dude. He really puts in all the effort. And honestly, I haven't even met him in person yet. I want to. I want to go up to Pennsylvania myself one of these days because I'm all the way in Connecticut. So I'm like far as shit. I didn't know that. Wow. I guess that makes sense that you asked us what time zone we were in. I, I'm, that's, yeah. I was in Canada, but uh, we just came to have a different time zone. Yeah. yeah. They do. Yeah, they do. Okay. I've worked with people in Canada. They do. What? It depends on where in Canada. I don't know. Yeah. I, There's a I few places. Know. Yeah. Yeah, but let me pull up right my map real quick. I need to pull up my time zone map and we can discuss this. But yeah, oh, <laughs> but yeah I make but, that a thing because I work with people from all over the world, not just in the United States. So I have to make sure I know the time zones. Because oh, one time right. I didn't, I was getting up at 3 a.m. to work with a band from Australia. And then they <laughs> bailed last second. And I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we're fortunate to have to meet who we have so far. And we're going to we're, hopefully we're going to keep the momentum going uh and that's that's the plan at least so i hope so i i love where you guys are going so far like the song i just heard a new release fell in love with it as soon as dakota sent it my way mm-hmm. speaking what, of what, that oh sorry what were you saying you like classic rock in general i love all forms of music but yeah i love classic rock all right or the, the 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 ep is more, has a little bit of everything in it there's a little bit of uh what would you guys say like what genre wise? It's, not, it's, it's mostly like classic rock, like eighties rock, 80s but rock. like there, there's a it's like to me, I think that it takes like elements from all kinds of rock. Yeah. You know? Um, there's definitely some more like modern elements in there from time to time. Um, but I think for the most part, we can say we have a very strong like eighties rock yeah. sort of sound. If you like, if you like eighties music, like uh, you'll like you'll like us, and that's kind of what we're shooting for. Um, we're trying to get people that attract people who like 80s music and hopefully bring them into other other places as well from our stuff like if Bodie's we're lu- if we're lucky attract people that don't yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's too true uh Bodie's like Bodie's into more like uh like periphery right uh, yeah. periphery like periphery. progressive like rock yeah. progressive metal um so he that. throws elements of that in one in the stuff he plays uh you're he's a Van Halen fan uh I'm I'm a Kiss fan uh you're I don't even know what you are like a Green Day fan Green Day and he he's like Beatles the Beatles are his guy Beatles and John Mayer so uh that's good I, I like to think we put a little bit of everything into our music whenever we write so that's kind of our goal at least so hopefully that comes across whenever the ep comes out i love that like i love when people try to mix all that in because you don't yeah. see that much nowadays 
You really yeah. don't. Unless you look in the underground, then, then you see a lot of it. But mainstream crap, you will never find it. Mm-hmm. That's that's kind of our 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 plan too is to make make it all combine it all, but make it do it in a way that makes sense. It isn't just us saying, "Oh, let's throw a drop a riff in this in this Beatles song." Although I'd love to, he would he would do that. He would do that <laughs> heartbeat. But like um, that that we all we all kind of work together in a way that's pretty cohesive to to make this like we're back on the road. That literally that, that's not a complicated song, but it's the I, I came up with the riff. You came up with basically every all the other guitar parts. Yeah. Um. The lyrics were was that was like that was pretty much you, right? Yeah. I think yeah. So, yeah. And then like we kind of just everything else that followed after that was like our songwriting basically is everyone do their own thing and if it works it works and usually it does. Well, I feel like even there's sometimes where like we work collaboratively like unintentionally yeah. sometimes. So there's sometimes where like lyrics for a song will all sit there, come up with lyrics all together. There's sometimes where it's like if there's like a riff idea or something like that or it's like where to take a song we'll yeah. collaborate on that. that's what's that's what that's where the cohesiveness is more important we each come up with our own stuff and then it kind of just but once we get together that's when it starts to really make sense ben's it's, really good at uh air drumming something yeah it is basically we all kind of do yeah. our own thing and then if we hear anything that could be improved say something We're not yeah. afraid to say something to each other yeah none of us get offended whenever we say stuff like that like that's a big thing too is being able to like you know how much we shit on race like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, every day. like as a, i mean and you don't do you take offense to, i hope not no, yeah i didn't no. think you did um but we'll say something like hey sing it like this even though none of us are really singers like we kind of <laughs> just like we'll be like hey do la 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 instead of la 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 like whatever yeah, yeah. but that exact conversation actually no, i'm kidding um <laughs> but yeah we we have a lot of we, we we work pretty well together i would think at least i think so i don't i never ask the guys about that i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but yeah, I, I I like the I like the way we're heading at least, and we, we're we're trying to change it up a little bit with some of our next next songs, but not like in a bad way. We're just wanting to do something different, which I think we should, we're we're going to be fine with. So I don't think anybody has. Um, and the other thing is, nobody's bigger than the group right now, which is good. Uh, we make jokes that he is, but he's not because uh, <laughs> he's wearing sunglasses right now in the interview. So that tells you what that tells you what we can. <laughs> gotta be gotta keep in character. Um, but yeah, so we're trying to like we uh we all kind of take our uh take our personalities seriously, but we don't make them forefront, right? Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah. I would think so. So that's that's our goal, kind of be a collective group as opposed to a bunch of individuals. Yeah, and that's a really good way to do it too. Like doing your own thing and then it all coming together is probably one of the best ways to make music, in my personal opinion. And honestly, so far from what I've heard, it's been working out pretty well for you guys. Thank you. We're, we're happy. To hear. Mm-hmm. Now, tell me about the lyrical process behind "Back on the Road." All right, race. We all, we all we all have input on lyrics, but usually the skeleton comes from him. That's probably the right way to put this. So yeah, I think like the way that the songs sound, it's hard to explain. Just something will come to mind. So yeah. it was a very like driving song. So I was like, oh. Back driving. on the road, yeah, driving <laughs> back on the road. So, and then from there, I think we all just kind of like take pieces, and then uh, we'll write like stuff that rhymes, but then it doesn't exactly fit. So then we have to go back and forth with it. A lot of molding. There's a lot of we start race. Race gives us the clay, and we all collectively mold. Normally, right? what Pretty happens much. is like we'll you know write the skeleton of the song, and then we'll go around in a circle, and we'll all kind of say what we think when we hear the song, and then like topic wise and then we go through and we pick which topic fits and then we start to toy with it and then we bounce lyric ideas off of each other and then eventually something sticks Mm -hmm. i think the whole thing is that it's like whatever we come up first or whatever we come up with first is usually not what we stick with (laughs) yeah (laughs) well no that's no i I mean i'm I'm laughing because you're right because the stuff we come up with first usually sucks like i um that's not accurate yeah, um, called the broom bowl. We've we've been rewriting lyrics since we. I mean, there's a couple songs. Our first two songs had like three different sets of lyrics to it, and different vocal melodies. melodies. Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. not just lyrics. It's uh, it's the, where the where the lyrics go, how they fit into the song, what the rhythms are. That all changes. Um, and it kind of eventually just morphs itself into the the best version of the song there is. And we're probably not even done with some of our songs doing that. Like we're going to change stuff as it goes on, and that's fine because that's how it works. That's the best way to come up with something. If you're, if you're too stubborn to stick to something and 
uh, not be willing not to change it, or what's the word? Be not willing to change it. Stubborn. Yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. Stubborn. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the part that that comes back to the none of us think we're like we're all working as a team. If not, we're not five individuals. We're five people. So if one of us has an idea. We're not going to change the riff to change the. I'm just saying riff because that's my thing usually. But um, like Ray, Ray, he comes up with a lyric, and we're like. Uh, that could be changed a little bit. He doesn't say, well, F you guys, we'll, I'm, I'm leaving. Um, we all kind of just take it as a constructive constructive thing. And then five minutes later, there's no more talking about it. We're just like, cool, let's, let's do that. And that's usually how it goes. Um, we've had no, like, there's been spats. There's no, like, serious arguments about anything, which is good. And I, I don't foresee any hap- anything happening in the future. So Nice. Yeah. It's really hard for some bands to do that too, because I know some groups who unfortunately don't even exist anymore because of crap like that. Yeah, that's that's like my I don't want to say my biggest fear, but I don't want to Well, it's not even a fear for me because like I feel like if there were different people in this band, yeah, it would be a problem. That's more what I mean. Yeah. But the way that we work with each other and have always worked with each other makes me confident that this this is something that's gonna go somewhere and there's no gonna there's no there's never been like a major blowout on it, a major argument. We all kind of get along always. Yeah. Like we're not just like if I, I'm confident in saying uh, that not Carter, not Carter, just because I didn't know him before. But like otherwise, I knew these three before, before being in a band that we would not not that we did every day, but we would have hung out. I would be okay hanging out with them, um, and that's kind of how it's. And I, now I would say that about Carter, but not at the time. So like that's part of it too is we didn't just find five random people. We didn't do tryouts. It's not like we said, hey, come strangers, come to this place and sing for us, and see what happens. Like and and that then you'd have no idea what the personality is like because you just know them. It helps that we all came from the same place too. Um, we know how to we know how to talk to each other and not make each other mad. And even if we do, we know that it's not not a personality thing. It's just a this is what I think. We can work we can work through it and figure something out. That's kind of how we how we function. Nice. That shows a lot of character, in my opinion, and shows a lot of growth for the band too. Yeah, we 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 like to think that. Um, I don't know, you have anything to add, Race? Race has been pretty quiet. No, I don't I don't got anything to add. No, right? yeah, that makes yeah, sense. I think we're just a unit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I mean we function as like a as a uh as a broom. I, sure. <laughs> as a broom. <laughs> well, I could say this is the most functional team I've been a part of. I've played sports my whole life. And especially in soccer, like if if you're players don't get along if your teammates don't get along and you're constantly arguing with each other you're not going to have success you're not going to show success so it, it definitely makes me confident that since we get along we're going to have success so yeah I, I agree with that that is an amazing answer i haven't heard something that good in a while hey bro. <laughs> sorry for my voice my voice is kind of crap today that's okay you were you were happy with the answer so you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wish my throat was though like shit <laughs> So let's see what's it. Th- I'm trying to think of more shit off the bat here. How I'll see. Um, I already mentioned any about Dakotas. What's up? Oh, I got a better one. So when do you guys like first start getting into music? Oh, like individually? Yeah. Oh, geez, my whole life. I'm sure that's pretty much the same for all of us. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, like my my earliest memories involve my dad showed me Kiss, like the band. Like I've like the band. Shut up, I. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like that preface. Yeah, <laughs> he, 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 didn't, he didn't just show me kiss. Yeah, right. the band. Um, but like I, I remember my my grandma always tells me, and it's actually funny. I've I've never told you guys this story. This is the first time I'll tell you guys it. When I was little, I I <laughs> this is the live <laughs> debut of my before. yeah. Um, apparently when I was little, I used to walk around with a broom acting like it was a guitar and like singing <laughs> singing kiss songs. Like, and I I remember she told me that I used to tell her, uh, like what the what the members were when I was like two. And like who the members of Kiss were, and then I got mad at her when she would get it wrong. And I still, I, I held a broom with me like all the time. And you're a lot smarter than I was. I sang into the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that that was that's one of the things. Like I, I um, I'll let everyone else have their talk, talk about their experiences with music. But I remember Kiss, Iron Maiden, all my favorite bands. They're as long as I can remember, I'm I was into them. So that's when I started. Um, and then that made me want to play that music. So that's kind of where I went. I'll go. All right. So uh, my parents are big music people, bunch of bunches of concerts every year. Um, my earliest memory that I don't, it's not even a memory as much as I was told when I was four, they went to a Dave Matthews concert 
and they didn't take me and I pouted and cried at my grandparents all night because they wouldn't take me to the concert. <laughs> so next year they took me and uh, like I've been going to concerts every year since. That's my earliest getting into music type thing. And then when uh, fourth grade came around, it was time to pick an instrument and I went with saxophone and I hated it. Uh, and I was ready to quit, but then a bunch of my friends said that they were going to play drums. So I was like, what the hell? I'll play drums. And then, uh, as a fourth grade, you said, what the hell? I'll play drums. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, it just kind of grew from there. I wasn't ever a fan, you know, of the timpani parts and the mallets parts, <laughs> but when, in uh, when we started playing drum set and stuff, I really took a liking to it. And then I got really obsessive about it in seventh grade. I have a drum head at my house with blood on it because one weekend I spent so much time playing drums that I'd like, I bled through my hands. But uh, that that's really how I started to get into the drums is I literally got so obsessed with it that I just couldn't stop playing. <laughs> hey, buddy, you're up. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think it's a common theme with all of us that we all grew up around music and, you know, yeah. as early as we can remember, I can remember like, you know, drive it or riding, like my dad's truck and he's blasting like Motley Crue, things like that, Foo Fighters. Um, but whenever Crue. it came to fourth grade, if I'm not mistaken, I wanted to play trumpet. And I, I'm like, I actually enjoyed playing. I, I enjoyed playing trumpet a lot. Um, I did like musicals and stuff like that. And then for my junior year in high school, I moved to Bell Vernon. Um, I was in Manhattan beforehand. Um, did marching band there, did a musical there, uh, and COVID hit, uh, which that was fun. Um, so I, I played trumpet throughout my entire like high school career, but I think around like 2015, 2016, um, that's when I started playing guitar. I, was, I think I was maybe like 12 or 13, some along there. I'm not doing the math right now, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> crunch, crunch the numbers. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not crunching any numbers. I, I started playing guitar around 2015, 2016, um, alongside trumpet, but I only did trumpet like for school. I did guitar on my own, and then it was when this band came together that I was actually able to like play guitar with other people and be in a band. I mean, obviously with trumpet, I was in you know symphonic bands, you know concert bands, uh, marching bands, things like that. I was just like there was always bands there because it was school. I felt like with guitar, I didn't have anything for the longest time. And whenever I came here, started doing guitar, started doing like backup vocals. And it's probably some of the most fun I've had making music ever. So, yeah. Caleb? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Race? All right. It's like when you order at Denny's. Yeah. Uh, I'm not ready to go next to spoken, like <laughs> spoken like a true bass player. <laughs> so, um... I think like music for me was my whole life. Like I was in, I was like doing drums in elementary school. I don't even remember why I started drums, but I just started playing drums. And then one day, like the moment that really got me into music was uh, one day my dad called me downstairs. He was like, check this out. And it was Black Sabbath playing War Pigs live. And uh, it was like Tony Iommi just shredding on the guitar. And I thought Ozzy was like the greatest thing ever. <laughs> and uh, I was like, wow, like I really want to do that. And I'm watching Tony Iommi play guitar. And I'm like, but that is way too hard. I'm never going to be able to do that. <laughs> when, I, so when I saw the bass player and I was like, oh, that's easy enough. I'll just, I'll just go do that. So I went and I bought a bass the next day. And then <laughs> <laughs> that describes race perfectly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw something cool once, so I went and invested hundreds of dollars in it immediately. Well, not only that, he sees one thing, says that's too hard, move, yeah. move to another thing, and then buys it the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, so then I played bass for only probably about like three months, and then I think like it wasn't long after that I met Bodie, and I thought like I was really good. I was like, yeah, like I'm a good bass player. <laughs> so I think that that was kind of the moment where I was like, Bodie, let's start a band because like. I just thought I was the shit, but I really, I really wasn't. Oh my god! So that's why I'm saying you're now. And I was like talking to a brick wall, and I, I don't, I don't play any musical instruments anymore. But harmonica. harmonica, yeah, he plays harmonica in, in one of our songs. So yeah, that's cool. Caleb, do you Caleb, want to say you anything? Uh, I don't really have like a deep. I feel like everyone else had a deep story. I just think it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fair. Yeah. Hey, yeah. sometimes that's how it is, man. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. That's how I am here. It's just fun for me. Right, yeah. Literally just did our Denny's rotation here. Yeah. Yeah, we go to Denny's. That's another that that honestly this is gonna this is gonna be 
this is going to sound too deep for what it actually is, but we go to Denny's every week after practice. Pretty much. I, I don't want to oh, say every week, but it's tradition. Yeah. No, at least, at least some of us go, um, whoever, whoever can we make, we go, uh, and that, that, this is going to sound like an exaggeration, but that probably helps with us not being jerks to each other. Oh because, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, I, makes, it, like it makes the social socialization between us, like gone from like, what musical note is this to actually having, you know, conversations on a weekly basis. Yeah. And I, I always tell them like, if this band were to blow up tomorrow, like, I don't think it will, but if it, if it did, I, I'm happy with everything that we've done in terms of like memories we're going to have. And as funny as that sounds, uh, that... whatever you said, blow up, I think you know, like get big. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I, that too. I mean, yeah, <laughs> if we get attacked by, by someone, uh, <laughs> Russia. but yeah, um, but yeah, uh, we, um, I think I think we're pretty happy as as just friends. Like even if we stop making music tomorrow, not that I want to, but we all still hang out. So I think that's pretty that's a pretty good sign of where we are. And Denny's is a part of that. So yeah. and I advise any starting bands to go to Denny's on a weekly basis. Yes, okay. you were the second band to do that that I've talked to. Denny's. There, Denny's. there has been another. Uh, and they Denny's. even did. They even I think hooked up an amp and started playing it at Denny's. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Talking about playing in a Denny's for so long. And- we. The one of the managers there, we had convinced that we were gonna do a concert there in the summer, but I don't think he's there anymore. Yeah, not. I don't want to say convinced because we did not like we'd show up, but like he he said he wanted us to do it. Um, that'd be so fun. That'd be the great Denny's Grand Slam, but yeah, be part two. Yeah. Oh no, they weren't even aware. They just went in there and just did it for the memes. <laughs> <laughs> like they're eating there, then they started saying, "Fuck it, let's just do some practice." I'm like, "Wait, what the fuck?" And they just started jamming out in our Denny's, just out of random. Yeah. Hey, man, sometimes it takes Denny's. Sometimes it takes Denny's. <laughs> We've tried other places, too. That's the thing. Like, I remember one week Denny's was closed. We were like, let's go to Eaton Park. Eaton Park is a um, – do you know what Eaton Park is? Because you're from Connecticut. You probably nope. don't. It's like a Denny's, but Pittsburgh local. And, or Pennsylvania. I don't know how far out of Pittsburgh it goes. But it's, yeah. um, it's like a – it's like they have – milkshakes and it's like a diner it's just a diner across okay. the franchise and we, we went there and it was like this isn't the same like we there's something about it there's something about denny's it's something about the the service it's always not quite perfect you know, like <laughs> yeah. the, the food the food's all never it very rarely comes out perfect like it's just it's the, the, the perfect amount of dysfunction that like encapsulates us i think it's That's like what the, makes it good yeah like it's like the perfect room restaurant that, that, is, that is way is that, is that accurate? Is that accurate? I'm just fucking yeah. hungry. Yeah, like <laughs> I feel that on a very spiritual level, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Let's see. I'm trying to think here. Oh, here's a good one. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah. Um. Yeah. You, you ever interview another band called Broom? Nope. First one. <laughs> that's oh, I got one. I got one. Oh, you got one. How's Connecticut? Oh, that's a good one. Pretty shitty. Ah, uh, uh, kid, more like kinetic. Yeah. You could. I want to say something totally different. <laughs> <laughs> no, we had like a bunch of fucking shootings here. It sucks. Well, it's better than Ohio. Debatable. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I went out of my way to buy a shirt that just says Ohio on it. Just says worst state ever. He does have that shirt. I can't confirm. <laughs> You'll figure. I got it from a uh, store on the strip in Pittsburgh. <laughs> There were hundreds of them. It was amazing. <laughs> nice. Anything else? Any other questions? Anyone? Caleb, I know you're full of full uh, full of. What do you do for a living? Like besides this? Oh, I work in um. I do aerospace machining. I make parts for military and commercial airliners. Oh wow, that's, that's really cool. cool. That's yeah. Really cool. Normally, when somebody tells me what they do for a living, I'm like, oh, that's boring. But that actually sounds really cool. <laughs> it's fun. The only downside is I usually get cut up so badly. Like, my hands usually get ripped to hell. But, oh. hey, pays well, and I'm able to I'm able to do something productive. That, that, that's a, that sounds at least interesting. Yeah. Well, I'll see. Before that, though, I was doing this full time. Because I still, yeah. I, like, I just took a break to focus on learning my job. Yeah, but I'm glad I have more time now because I do I do ten hours a day, man. It, it fucking hurts, but I'm glad I have more time to do this again. Yeah, that's what. It's kind of what. It's important to follow what you enjoy. Just what you have to do so. Like, buddy, you're you, you enjoy cooking, right? I, I would assume you would. 
Yeah, no, I yeah. enjoy cooking. I, I, cook. I was okay, so I was originally going to be a uh, music ed major, and like I went to a community college for it. And after one semester, I'm just like, eh, maybe this ain't it. But I worked at his family or Ben's family's restaurant. Um, that's probably about like half hour from here. And I found out that I like cooking. So uh, I switched my major and I'm in a culinary program. So, yeah. <laughs> I two semesters ago. So I'm almost yeah. out of there. Yeah, I did community college myself, man. No shame. No shame in it. It, it's a smart move. It's a smart Honestly, move. my twin's going for some psych bullshit, and I'm like, you have fun with that? Because while well, you're at $100,000 worth of debt, I am only I only got two grand to worry about, so I'm a lot better off than he is right now. It's just like, I didn't even have to like, take a loan out. I saved up so much from like, cutting grass, working, stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, uh, just applied for a couple of scholarships, got them, and it's like, I'm able to pay out of pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, I would love to do this full-time again, but financial wise it's not something i can do but in the future who knows hmm the keyboard eventually it will be yeah that's how I, it. I mean without music i would have been dead so that's kind of why i started this whole thing up yeah yeah and then dakota found me a little while after that and then i've been with him ever since nice yeah. nice yeah awesome dude like i said when I, when I mean down to earth i mean that like to the bottom of my soul he will go out of his way to make sure everything happens the way it's supposed to. Awesome. That's good. That's very yeah. good. Yeah. That's why I was excited when you told me about you guys. I'm like, oh shit, a new band? Let's go. Because I always <laughs> love introducing me to people. We are, we're, we're at the point now where it's, we're kind of like, I don't want to, this is going to sound like kind of cocky, but like <laughs> this, this kind of stuff's new to us, like being talked to about what we do. Like we're used to, we're used to just being people who play in the, in the, in the shop by mm -hmm. ourselves. Like, and people telling us that like what we're playing is cool. Like that's that sounds like a that's the extent of it. Yeah, yeah. Like that, it's just it's one of those things that's like, wow, someone else enjoys this, not just us. So we're kind of that's we're still getting used to that kind of feeling. Well, um, I love it, honestly. Yeah, thank you, thank you. We'll go up play a show in Connecticut sometime. Hopefully. If you <laughs> do, let me know, and I will haul ass. I'll take the day off work. I don't care. I'll make it happen. <laughs> Cause I love to, I, I've worked with, um, I've seen a few bands live that are under Dakota. Well, one, and then I met some other bands there that I did interviews with, but it's like, I just love talking to bands. I love working with them, helping them spread their music, their stories, et cetera. That's why I do it. So it's like, I don't, I'm not professional by any means. I give two shits about professional yeah. crap. I like to make sure everyone's having fun. Everyone's chill, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I do this, it's not for like anything big. It's just to help out artists talk with them, get to know them, talk about their music, etc. Because I think it's personally a lot of fun for me. That's yeah, my yeah. reasoning. I think related to music should be fun first and foremost, you know? If you hate what you're doing, there's no reason to make, make music, yeah? You know? Exactly. It's like all about expression and the enjoyment of it. And listeners will be able to tell if you hate it. That's, like, I, I think that about a lot of, uh, uh, like, modern music are people who don't actually want to do it and they're just they're just doing it for the paycheck and it's like you, you can you can tell again i can um, relate to that that's why i don't listen to mainstream crap yeah I, I i'm not I, i'm not opposed to mainstream music but it's just a lot of it's just this cookie cutter like and that coming from me as a kiss fan that sounds funny because they all make fun of me because kiss is the, like most commercial band ever uh but like it's it, it's it's just there's a there's a level of uh like people that just don't don't like what they're doing you can you can tell it through what they're playing it's that simple yeah like if in our song like like you didn't want to be there you could tell oh yeah that's why i listen to a lot of like new rap like i can't stand it there's like no heart or soul in it mm -hmm. like old school stuff there's a lot of heart and soul new stuff i don't really see that except for like rock especially in the underground you see a lot of that in underground but not much in mainstream yeah that's like the there's no, really no like rock bands that actual rock bands that exist right now in the mainstream. Maybe like new ones. Like obviously, there's the legacy guys who are like Metallica and Maiden. And, maybe like if you maybe if you want to consider like Ghost, maybe Greta Van Fleet. Greta Van Fleet. Uh, I'm thinking more like mainstream, like Greta bands, bands that are in the mainstream. But other like, than Greta, I really can't name like Ghost any is other new band. Yeah, like, like Ghost is big in the rock scene, but they're not like 
Maybe yeah, they're not like like household names. Yeah, like Maroon yeah. Five almost was there, but now they're not even a rock band. They're just Adam Levine and his friends. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it that's that's what I mean. Like these, it's 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 not that the genre is dead. It's just socially it's dead. It seems like mm. that makes that's so that's kind of what we are we're hoping to we're not we're not looking to single handedly bring back rock because it's it's definitely not dead but it'd be, great uh, if it'd, be, it'd be awesome yeah, it'd be cool. <laughs> but um we're trying to kind of just slowly slowly remind people what it was what that kind of music can sound like with with our with our with all our influences combined and, and if we do a little part to spark that change then great yeah well honestly I think you guys will I really do because from what I've heard already it's definitely alive. Thank you. I appreciate so I have it. A, I have a good feeling about you guys. I really do. Thank you. I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys live one day. Yeah, we yeah, we, awesome. we, we want to, uh, believe it or not, uh, race his goal. He, he has a dream notebook from when he was five, and it says play in Connecticut. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I, yeah know, I, know a good, I know a good dive bar if we need one. <laughs> <laughs> we have no shortage of dive bars here. Nice. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're hoping to at least at, to make it as far as we possibly can in terms of, uh, helping, helping keep at the very least keep rock alive. Yeah. And if that means, you know, staying comfortable in the local scene, you know, everyone in town knows us. I mean, then great. If that means, you know, being like ghost and being a household name in rock, that, that, I mean, also great. If that if that means becoming like Greta Van Fleet and everybody, even people who don't know, like rock that well know you. Really? That's right. Just wherever we go. Yeah. It's just like we hope to bring back a little bit of the original magic, original passion that rock had that, you know, with as with a lot of music in general today, you don't have. And we we want it, it, to on some level put the area on the map where we're from. Yeah. Like. Um, it's not that Bill Burns like dead or anything like that, but yeah, pretty much. It's, yeah, we have a Walmart. We have a Walmart. <laughs> like, yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not like a small town. We're not, but we're also yeah. not, we're not a city. It's like you're in the middle, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good old, good, you know, yeah. Yeah, I hate Zoom, man. I, it only gives me like forty minutes. I hate it. I gotta upgrade this damn thing. <laughs> We have like what a minute left before auto kicks us out. Fuck you, Zoom. Oh shoot, let's let's plug our EP. We yeah. have an EP out February twenty fourth, um, on all streaming platforms with with four more four four more songs yeah. as a uh, on top of back on the road. Nice. Um, five songs total, one and one one cover and four originals. So we're looking forward to putting that out. We're excited. I look, I look forward to listening to it, man. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for yeah. thanks for talking. Dude, thanks for thanks for like being here. It's been a blast. I. I hope forward to see you guys soon and talk to you guys again. Yeah, definitely, man. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Take care. Have a good night, guys. Yeah. See you.